if you've got noisy, blurry or low res photos that need salvaging, this video is for you. It's back guys, Anthony edits your photos and in this one we're going to be working on this photo of what I believe is a kingfisher and this was shot at approximately 20 megapixels, quite a high ISO at 6400 and that was shot on the Olympus EM1 Mark III. So the first thing you'll notice is that our kingfisher actually only takes up a very small proportion of the frame. So if we crop this down, first of all, we'll change the ratio to a more standard two to three ratio, and we bring this into a more meaningful crop of our kingfisher. We are gonna be throwing away so many pixels to give us this more impactful composition. And you may wonder, well, how am I making these decisions to actually crop this where I want? You'll notice these kind of twiggy branches sticking in from the left, from the top here. And what I'm trying to do is actually minimize those. So if I can bring my crop in so that they're actually excluded from the frame, so you can see this top one's gone, the one on the left-hand side as well, even this little hook at the bottom left-hand corner, I can bring that in and just minimize those busy elements. And now our Kingfisher is much more the hero of the frame, but there's several problems just with the image quality itself. As you can see, this is a really noisy file and it's also very low resolution. If I were to jump back to the catalog, we can't actually see the new cropped version, but if I go to right click and then export this photo, it's gonna tell us what our new dimensions are. And that is barely a four megapixel file. So if we've decided that that's the ideal crop that we want to go with for this photo, we're left with an image quality that is severely undermining our ability to process this photo effectively. So what can we do? Well, there are a couple of extensions for Luminar Neo that are designed to help us solve this problem. However, are they good enough? Let's take a look. So I'll jump back into the edit section here and I'm just gonna zoom in to 200% so that we can get a better feel for the noise that's present in this photo. And we're just gonna open up Noiseless Raw. And this is certainly a pretty noisy file, so I'm just gonna select the Noise High option I'm gonna let Luminar run its AI calculations. And thanks to the latest updates, we have a result much, much quicker than previously. And if we look at our before and our after, this is indeed a big improvement. And we can have a little play around with things like the details. We could reduce the color noise a little if we want and even get more aggressive with the luminosity denoise. And we can also add sharpness as part of the process as well. However, we've also got access to super sharp AI. And seeing as we have that, we may as well see what it can do for us. Again, I'll just let Luminar Neo run its magic and see what it comes up with. Now, whenever you're running any of these AI-based tools, you're gonna to need to exercise a little bit of patience because they're very resource intensive and your computer's CPU and graphics card is gonna take a little bit of a hammering. Okay, that's the noise and the sharpness dealt with. Let's jump into the catalog section and now I'm gonna deal with the low resolution issue and we're gonna upscale this photo. So I've just dragged it into upscale and here we're able to select the upscale amount we want to work with. This is a really nice tool and I really like the simplicity of the interface. I'm gonna go for a four times upscale. And once it's done, we're just gonna get thrown into the upscale folder, which you can access from your folder section over here. And then we come down to the bottom. And here we are at 100%. And let's just fit that to screen and have a look what it's done for us. Hmm. So as you'll know, if you've got the Luminar Neo subscription, these three extensions that I use to improve the image quality are included. And if that's what you've got access to, then absolutely that's a great place to start. But if like me, you've got a big library of images where the image quality isn't quite where you would expect it to be by today's standard, then you might need a better tool. So let me show you how we can really improve this image with Photo AI from Topaz that leverages its acclaimed Sharpen AI, Denoise AI and my personal favorite Gigapixel AI all in one package. So let me show you that. I've got a little shortcut for it on my desktop there, opens up very quickly and we can either drag and drop or browse to the image and I'm opening the original raw file and it applied camera matching profile corrections before it started calculating any of its AI magic. And straight away just in autopilot mode, we already have a vastly improved image. I'm gonna zoom into 200% so it's a little easier to see over YouTube. And hopefully you can see that this is a marked improvement. It really is incredible. And one of the things that I really love is that it's actually detecting the subject that it's using. If we're not entirely happy with it, we can come in and click to refine, and then using the brush, we can actually subtract areas if we want to, or we can add them in. So for example, it missed the little bird's claw here. We may also want to include a little bit of the branch as well. 
and if you make mistakes just delete it and as we release it's actually applying a feathering to the edge so it's not a hard edge and you can actually increase the feather amount to soften that mask up even more if we wanted to we can also turn on the AI brush option and you can see that it actually adds elements based on the AI I'm not a huge fan of that option I prefer just to paint it in myself but anyway once you're happy with your mask you just click apply and as I mentioned there are three key components to this software the first is for removing noise the second is for sharpening the photo and the third is for upscaling the image making it larger but we also have this bonus section here which is enhance resolution and I found that to be really useful However, when we toggle that enhanced resolution on, that is just another level of AI computation that needs to be done, and you're just gonna to have to factor in, it's gonna take just a little bit longer. So we could stick with the default values for this. However, I'm just gonna have a quick play around and see if we can't improve this. Let's bump the strength up to, I don't know, halfway, about 50 for that one, 50 on the details, and see how that looks. And if we're happy with it, we can move on. For the sharpening, I've actually found that motion blur actually does a really good job even when there isn't actually any motion blur present. And prior to recording this, I tested each of these options and I actually quite liked motion blur. So we will stick with that, but let's again push the strength up. It might be overdoing it to put the clarity and the strength at 50, but it just might make it a bit easier on the video to see a more marked difference between where we came from and where we've got it. So as I click and hold on the photo, we see the original raw file, and then I release and see where we've got to. And you can actually see that there is feather detail that's even being brought in as well. It's pretty mind blowing. And you'd think that having the enhanced resolution on or off wouldn't matter. You'd think there's no change in resolution, therefore this won't actually be doing anything. However, if we hover over the tool tip, they do say, tip, you can also use this at one times to improve general image quality. And I've found that to be the case. Just by leaving that on, you do get an improvement to your image. But for this one, I'm actually gonna go for low resolution. And my rationale behind that is, once we've cropped this image down from its original 20 megapixel file size to the more preferred crop that we looked at before, it is going to be a low resolution image and so by choosing the low resolution the AI is actually going to introduce some additional detail for us. So we'll go low resolution, we've already run a noise suppression so I don't feel that we need to have that set so high and let's match the same output size that we originally used inside Luminar. We can now go for a fit to screen and now because I'm showing the whole photo in my preview window it's actually taking longer to generate this preview. But the reason I wanted to zoom back out is because I'm actually gonna use the crop tool inside of Photo AI. And currently we have a four to three ratio which matches the Olympus's native crop ratio. But I would like to change that to a two to three, or in my case, a three to two. So we can just click these arrows between the width and height to change the orientation. And now I'm just gonna kind of match the same crop that we exported from Luminar Neo originally. I think it was something like that. And now I'll just click apply. And while Photo AI works on my preview, if we have a little look at the width and the height, and we were to multiply those together, you can see that again, we're going to end up with approximately a 70 megapixel file to work on. And while it's calculating that, let me answer a question, because a lot of you have asked me before when I've demonstrated Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, why are you not using Photo AI to do this? And it purely comes down to patience, because as you can see, Photo AI has the technology from all three of Topaz's award-winning software built into it. And every time we're getting it to run Denoise, sharpen, upscaling, the enhanced resolution, all of that, those computational things add up. So if I know I just want to upscale my photo, that's when I go for Gigapixel. But I'm lucky enough to have these bits of software. But if you have to choose one or the other and you want an all-in-one place, then I would definitely recommend Photo AI. So check it out in the link in the description. And if you use that link, it just helps me with my channel as well. So thank you very much for that. Right, let's look at the quality that we're now dealing with and we can get into our edit in Luminar Neo. So this is the original raw file, and when I release, we can see what Photo AI has done for us. It's a huge improvement. I'm gonna change the magnification down here to 100%, and just use the preview box to go over the head. So originally we've got a noisy, pixelated mess, and now we can actually see detail on the bird before and after. I know it's not perfect, but it's a massive improvement. Here's our before, here's our after. I mean, if we look at the leg here, you can actually see the feathers around the leg. And if I hold the mouse down to see the original, 
You just can't fathom that detail, but Photo AI has actually been able to bring it out. So if we're happy with that, all we need to do is just click save. And the cool thing is we can export it as a JPEG, a TIFF or a DNG. I'm just gonna go for a TIFF in this instance with 16 bit depth and no compression. Hit save. And just like that, it's done. And now comes the fun bit of editing. So I'm just gonna jump into the develop section for a start because I want to boost up the exposure. It's just a little bit too dark for my liking. I don't wanna to go too bright and bleach out the background. So just a small little bump, I don't know, somewhere around 0.6 is fine. I'm just gonna bring down the highlights a little bit because we do have some white in the background. I think it might be a bit of water or something and I don't really want that competing with our attention. So I'm just gonna drop the highlights a little bit and I also just wanna bring the shadows up slightly as well. Now, if we toggle our before and our after, before and after, I like what we're doing with the bird, but I do feel like we are brightening up the background too much. So I'm just gonna use a mask to try and keep this more localized around the hero of the shot, which is the bird. Now I'm gonna jump into mask AI. You might think, why are you gonna do that, Anthony? Because there's no bird option. There's architecture, and somehow the AI thinks the bird might be architecture, but there's also water that's an option. And sometimes just by playing around with these options, we can get lucky because what I'm able to do with that selection there is just flip it around by inverting it. And now I've got the opposite of what that's selected. So now I don't want to close that down, but um, let's just jump back in here. Now with the develop tool before and after, you can see it's only brightening from the stick and above. So that's much closer to what we want already. And now I can just come in with a brush, a raise, set my strength a little lower so that I can build the effect up, but a nice big brush. And now I'm gonna click and just sort of paint around the edge of this. And by doing that, I'm just gonna remove that develop effect from around the edges here. And if we come down to the mask actions and click show, you can now see this is the mask that we're applying. So those changes that we made with the develop tool are only being applied where this red mask is. So we'll jump back to adjustments and toggle the before and after, and we've got a nice bit of brightening through the center of the frame there. Now, one thing I'm not happy with is the actual color of the overall photo. So I want to address that, and I can do that through the color section with the white balance, but unlike the last change where I wanted it focused in just one area of the photo, this is a global change. So I've opened a second develop tool that's not going to be affected by the mask we previously made. Now I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool here, and if I've got something that's a neutral gray, I can click it. So I'm looking around the underside of the bird's throat here, and I've just clicked once, and I think that's given us a more neutral look to the photo. If I look at the before and the after, yeah, it's actually given us a more neutral color palette. Maybe I don't wanna take it that far. We can just ease the temperature off slightly, but I do feel that the very nature of this photo says, please boost in a bit more saturation. We want more color, particularly in the bird. Now, grabbing the saturation slider and pushing that up, it's just a little bit too much all over the whole photo. And I think grabbing the vibrant slider is gonna give us a much more subtle introduction of color. Now, I prefer that a lot more. I think the background's getting a little oversaturated. And so what I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of this vibrance increase in. I don't know, somewhere around 50 is fine. And again, let's look at our before and our after. Before and after, that's a nice little pop. Okay, let's close that down and see what else we can do. I don't wanna to go too crazy with this photo. I wanna keep this quite authentic to the scene that we see in front of us. Playing with the Accent AI slider inside of Enhance AI shows us what can be done to the photo again globally. But what I'm doing is just keeping my eye trained on the bird and the branch only as I move this slider back and forth and I'm thinking, yeah, you know what? Why don't we mask that in just over the bird and get some of that goodness going on? So I'm gonna grab my brush this time. I'm gonna reduce the size and I'm just gonna click and paint over the bird. I don't need to be too accurate with this. Doesn't matter if we bleed over the edge of him a little bit, no problem there. Let's have a little toggle of before and after. It's subtle, but it's a nice little pop. If we wanted to bring attention to our bird, what we can do is just grab the Structure AI tool as well and just crank that up and see what it does for us. You know, if we toggle the before and after, you can see that it's far too much, particularly through the rest of the scene. It's making things very busy and bringing attention to that background. So I really don't wanna do that. But look, again, maybe I wanna just add in a little bit of this structure over the bird. So let me grab a brush. This time I'll reduce the size so I can be just a little bit more precise with it. And if there's areas of detail, I think, you know what, might be worth just having a little look here. I'll just paint over them with the mask. And there you go, just a little subtle pop. 
One other thing that can help to draw our viewers' attention to the bird is to use a vignette. So I'm just going to drop the amount down fairly far into negative territory just so we can see what's going on a little bit better. And I'm going to grab the rounder slider. You can see if I take it to the left, the vignette adheres closer to the edge of the frame. That's not really what I want. What I'd like to do is create more of a circular aperture that when I choose the subject and click on the bird, it's just going to frame him nicely. And we can just feather that effect so it comes in a bit tighter. And then we can brighten up the center of the frame. So again, it's going to help draw our viewer's eye to the bird. Of course, doing this at the moment is far too much if I flip between how it was and how it is now. But we push these sliders quite aggressively so that we can actually sculpt the vignette, see what it looks like, and then we're free to come back to the amount slider and just tease it into an amount where we feel it's appropriate. Let's have a look before and after. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, we're very nearly done, but I'm going to add one more tool, and you probably know which one I'm going to go for. It's the mystical filter. You know how much I love that one. But I'm not just using it arbitrarily here. There's a very good reason for it. By running all of those AI image improvements, yes, it's helped our image immensely. However, sometimes some random little artifacts can be introduced, and so by adding the mystical filter that just kind of softens off the image, it might just help to play those down just a little bit. We also get the added benefit of some extra saturation in the image as well that I think for this photo it's just going to work really well. So we'll close the vignette down, scroll down to mystical which exists in the creative section and let's just grab that amount slider and again let's be really obnoxious with it and push it all the way up to 100. We've got that soft dreamy kind of look to it at the moment before and after but now we just want to kind of come in and finesse that overall look. So I'm going to boost the shadows up slightly and grab the softness slider and drop that down and decide do I want it to look quite hard and crunchy, quite abrupt, or do I want a softer, smoother transition? So a little softer in this case is probably a good thing. And we can also play with the saturation slider, boost that up a little bit if we want. If we feel like I cooled it off too much earlier, we may want to introduce just a little bit of extra warmth. And yes, of course, that's far too much at 100. So we're just going to ease that back down. Currently at 30, here's our before, here's our after, before and after. And there are just a couple of little anomalies in the photo, such as this little spot here, here. You know, if you see those, you can just get the erase tool. Not sure why that bit's red there. And then we can just click erase and Lumina will take care of that for us. And now let's have a quick look at our import from Topaz. And this is with our edit from Neo. So here's our before, here's our after. We can click the split screen option and do a little slide left to right, check we're happy with it. That's a nice improvement, but the real test is looking at that original noisy, low res, blurry photo and looking at where we've got to from that starting point. So here we go. Here's our before, here is our after. Before and after. So here's my honest opinion about Luminar Neo. On one hand, it's a fantastic photo editor that I enjoy using immensely. It's my go-to when I'm editing any photo. But the extensions that have been released for it, specifically the image improvement extensions, they're not as good as what Topaz have to offer. Topaz have been doing this for years. Sharpen AI, Denoise AI, Gigapixel AI, I love those. And the fact that they've uh, amalgamated all of that technology into one app, one piece of software, is pretty mind blowing what it can do. So if image quality improvement is important to you, I'd strongly recommend checking out Photo AI from Topaz. I'll put a link to it in the description below. It's been a long time since I've done an Anthony Edits Your Photos video and I've really enjoyed it. If it's something that you would like to be a part of i'll put the email address on the screen now so send your photos to that email address but please let me know what it is that you're wanting to achieve with the edit don't just send me files without any instruction edit this you want to have a clear goal of what you're trying to achieve also please send me the raw files you are shooting in raw now not jpeg come on you've been watching my channel long enough shoot in raw and while i would love to feature everybody i do have to give priority to my channel members and channel supporters just as my way of saying thank you to them for the continued support and keeping my channel going so on that note i'll leave it there thank you so much guys if you want to check out another video there's one there if you haven't subscribed already click that button there and i'll see you in the next video bye bye for now